Hi, I'm Professor Angela Rasmussen from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Utah. Today I'm going to go over how we analyze a MOSFET circuit that has DC inputs. So the goal is to be able to analyze a circuit containing a MOSFET when the DC source is applied. So here I've outlined the procedure for DC analysis for MOSFET, so you can refer to this in the notes. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna assume a saturation mode. We're gonna zero all the AC signal sources, um, open up all the bypass and coupling capacitors. So in this case, those will be here. And that will disconnect whatever's connected onto it, and we won't have that in our analysis. Then we know that IG is zero, so in this case that's I1 will be zero, and the ID and IS is exactly the same. We're gonna use the equation and then calculate all the fine all of the voltages and currents and then check the conditions. So these are going to be equal. So without current going through here, we know that all the current through here goes through here. And we can use a node voltage there at VG to solve for the gate voltage. So we have VG minus four over two K. And then VG over two K is equal to zero. And then we can solve this for VG. And the 2K will get multiplied by zero. And so we have two VG is equal to a plus four and then divide by the two and we have VG is two volts. So that gives us our gate voltage of two volts. So next we need to write the ID equation. So I'm gonna copy this. And we want to put in terms of ID. So we need to write VGS in terms of ID, which means we need the VS equation to be written in that term. So we have VS here and we can rewrite VS to be, I'll do, this will be a plus minus plus. So plus ID times 500 minus 1.7 plus ID times 500. And now we can write VGS, which is gonna be VG minus VS. So remember it's the first subscript minus the second subscript. So that's gonna be two minus this quantity of VS. So I'm gonna combine the 500. So this is a minus ID times 1K and then a plus 1.7. So we can rewrite this in the ID equation. So ID will be equal to one half and mu n COX um, W over L is given as the four milli amp per volt square. So we have four milli and this VGS is going to be two minus ID times one K plus 1.7 and then minus VTH and VTH is given as two volts here. So minus two squared. And now we can combine these. And so we have ID and we can take the four milli divided by two. So it'd be two milli and divide that over to the other side. So this is one over two milli. And the twos cancel here. So then we can multiply out the minus ID. So this will be ID squared and one K squared. 
and then minus 3.4 KID, and then plus 2.89. And now we need to make sure that we bring this quantity over to the other side so we have it equal to zero. So bringing that over, we have ID squared times 1K squared. And then this is going to be minus 3.9K ID plus 2.9 or 2.89. And now we have a quadratic and we can use the quadratic formula to solve for it. So if you recall, so when you have a form such as this, ax squared plus bx plus c, this quadratic, x is going to be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So you're going to get two values for this, and I'll show you which one you're going to choose. So we're going to put this into that form. So we have id is equal to b in this case is 3.9k plus or minus the square root of 3.9k squared. And A is 1K squared, and B is 2.89. And then 2A will be 2, 1K squared. So this gives us two values, 2.9 milli and 1 milli. So the value that's going to be valid is the one that actually gives you a VGS greater than VT. So... You can test both of them and see only it will be unique solutions so only one of these is going to be the right value so for one milli if we go back to vs we plug that in we have one milli times 1k Minus 1.7 gives us a Vs of a minus 0.7 volts. And so VGS in this case is going to be 2 plus 0.7 for a value of 2.7, which is greater than 2. So this one will be the correct one. And so we will say that ID is equal to IS is equal to one milliamp. And we also knew that VG was two volts and VS we found as minus 0 0.7 volts. So these are our values we found so far. So now we need to find VD, which is going to be here at this VO node. And so we have VD is 9 minus ID times 3K. And so we have 1 milli 3K. So this gives us a value for VD of 6 volts. And so now we need to check all of these to see if this mode is correct. So we need to check VGS is greater than VT, H, and we need to check that VDS is greater than VGS minus VT. So these are the conditions for VTH. So these are the conditions we need to check. And on this, just note that my VT is mislabeled sometimes and should be VTH. So in this case, VGS, we already checked, was uh, 2.7 volts, and that is greater than the VTH of 2 volts. So it is on. VDS is going to be 
seven volts, which is greater than 2.7 minus two for a value of 0.7 volts. So it is in saturation. So we have proven that it is saturated and then the last part of this is to state the DC bias point. The DC bias point is either VGS or the current. So you can state that it's VGS or ID. Both of those are considered a bias point. And so in this case,